ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the analysis of yolano tv i hope you well from whatever you're watching this channel now i want us to focus our attention on gadon Muchomba. what has it that she's the only member of parliament there who can walk freely without even a bodyguard why because she stood with the people the president only rejected the finance bill but assented and signed the appropriations bill 2024. Mimi nimesoma economics at the university level and I know budget making process involves expenditure and revenue. There are two columns and they must balance. So we dwelt more on finance bill, which is a revenue raising measure. But we never touched much on expenditure column. So what is this that Treasury had proposed to spend on? Why were we planning to raise the 300 plus billion? People talk about finance bill. Yes, that is something that William Ruto wrote a memo to have all the clauses there repealed. Though they have not been repealed, but that is what is going to happen. Now, Gadono Muchomba says the only mistake that people did not focus on was that appropriation bill that gave William Ruto mandate to spend money to sustain the budget. Remember, the old budget. So when I talk about the old budget, I mean even the budget of the first lady, second lady, uh, wife of the you know, spouse of the prime cabinet secretary, the illegal office. So Ruto was already given mandate to spend that. The only thing that Kenyans talked about was we don't want that finance bill. But you see, Ruto can go out of his way and dispose any asset to collect money. Can even go to an extent of collecting loans somewhere to be able to sustain that budget. So there, that is what Gadono Muchomba is telling us to put more focus on. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to like this video because there are so much we need to talk about. There's a video I want to share with you. There is something we need to talk about and the mistake which many Kenyans seem to have made. Like this video is so important if you like this video. And I'm so grateful for everyone who has been liking our video. Mind you, I don't take that for granted. Subscribe to this channel if you've not subscribed before. And to existing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. There's a time I shared something about... Otienda Molo. And Otienda Molo enlightened us about the need to come up with a repeal bill that was going to delete all the clauses in that finance bill. That is something we shared in this channel. If you remember, some like it was, I think it was last, last week there. So on this analysis, ladies and gentlemen, we know very well that finance bill is going to be totally repealed. Of course, that is now a bygone case. But the moment William Ruto signed the appropriation bill, that is the time Kenyans gave him a mandate to spend money. President William Ruto has moved to forestall a total shutdown of government services after he signed the appropriations bill into law. The new law gives the government the leeway to spend 3.9 trillion shillings. <laughs> spend money. That is what Gadon Mchomba is saying in this video. Hi, good people. I am back and today I just want to talk about the process of stopping the finance bill as the president pronounced himself. Yes, the president pronounced himself and not only did he pronounce himself but also wrote a communique to parliament through the speaker of the National Assembly. And that communique clearly stated that he would have loved us to delete every clause of that proposed bill. That communique was acted upon because the committee in charge, that is the relevant committee, is supposed to sit and do exactly that. So for those who have been asking me what is the status of that finance proposed uh, finance bill, I think I can conclusively say even if it took 21 days or 41 days or 7 days or 14 days, that is as well as done. However, the president only rejected the finance bill, 
but assented and signed the Appropriations Bill 2024. Mimi nimesoma economics at the university level. And I know budget making process involves expenditure and revenue. There are two columns and they must balance. So we dwelt more on finance bill, which is a revenue raising measure. But we never touched much on expenditure column. So what is this that Treasury had proposed to spend on? Why were we planning to raise the 300 plus billion, trillion? Sorry, billions. Why were we pushing so much to raise that much money? It is because already there was an expenditure schedule that was already shared. Unfortunately, in Parliament, we always use a lot of time and energy to discuss taxation, raising measures, but we don't go through budget expenditure column to go through every column, every item of that expenses, so that we know what is it that the president wants to spend on these roads, how much, which roads, which county, which constituency, which ward. We don't dwell much on those items. And one wonders why. So anyway, the president signed his expenses. And we cannot change those expenses through TikTok or through X spaces. No. We can only go to Parliament. If we really want to drop some of his expenditure, we either wait for the supplementary budget making process and amend or repeal the law that he signed in State House, which is the easier shortcut. Supplementary budget making process will come in two, three months to come. We can wait. Or go to Parliament and attempt to repeal, which is a bit more complicated process because you have to raise a certain quorum. So either way, the President has the mandate to spend money. Whatever sources of money he will raise, whether he will take a loan or he will, he will sell our assets or whatever he shall do, he already has express constitutional permission to spend. So when he told us that he's going to drop confidential budget item, he's going to drop money being used to run the 47 state-owned enterprises and agencies, when he told us he's going to stop funding the office of the first lady and the second lady and the prime, prime cabinet spouse, that already is in the law that he signed. So for him to drop that is another process. So that's where we are. That's all I have to say for today. Very well, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about the expenditure schedule. In the expenditure schedule, we have the office of the, of, the, of the first lady, office of the second lady, the prime cabinet uh, spouse's office. You know, there is somewhere in that video where Gadona Choba is talking about the difficulty. So it's, it's giving options of a supplementary budget, then giving options of a repeal bill. You know, nobody's talking about the T budget. People are only happy clapping when Ruto talked about removing the first lady's budget, removing the second lady's budget, removing the prime, the prime cabinet secretary's spouse's budget. But what about the tea budget? You know, all these things require quorum in the parliament. That is one thing that we know. And because Azimio does not have a quorum that can push all these things, that's what we say we are still in a legal quagmire. Now, from what Gatuno, Gatuno Mochomba says, is of course, she has given us two options. One is to wait for like three months, you know, three months, four months for the supplementary budget. So let's say, for, the, for example, three months. It means month one, the government will, will, will spend on the first lady's office. Month two, the same. Month three, the same. Probably month four until it passes. 
It might even pass in parliament, but Ruto will have to, have to sign. Maybe he might wait for another like 14 days or 21 days, wait for it, and then it becomes uh, law automatically. Now, there's another problem here. Let me say there's another catch. The office of the first lady has 285 employees. That is what we were told uh, during the, the during Senate, uh, Senate proceeding. We were also told that the office of the second lady has more than 100 employees. What does not come out clear is the office of the spouse of the prime cabinet secretary, how many employees she has, that has not been disclosed. And because that has not been disclosed, the other question that we have here is, where will these people go to? Is there, are they going to be fired? Will they be compensated? Because it was not their wish to have themselves fired. So they are going to be fired. Where will they be taken to? Who is going to compensate them. Probably if the, if the contract was to last for five years, then the contract is just terminated abruptly. Who is going to pay them? You see, we still have a legal problem. And I think I agree with Gadel Machomba. I don't know how many of you have, have thought about that part. Because these employees are almost, let's say we could say, 285 plus 100, that makes it 385. Then we don't know about the office of the prime cabinet the spouse of the prime cabinet secretary. Let's assume he has like she has like forty. That already makes it to around one four hundred twenty employees. So these four hundred and twenty employees, where will the government take them to? Because they were contracted to work in those offices. I I assume they are not on permanent basis. Maybe they are, could be on, on contract, most likely five years contract. You terminated them. The law requires that you must pay them then you find that we are still in the same, same problem. These people will be paid. Now, from where will they be paid? Ruto will say, I personally, I removed that budget and uh, I've done according to the Kenyan wishes, but these people must be paid for the, for the remaining uh, time. It's just like when you're employed in a company, the contract is, is a two years contract, then someone decides to terminate you, Gafla. <laughs> after least like six months, that employer is always supposed to face the consequences of compensating you for the remaining of the days because it was a contract, because you were never given a notice. Now let's just say, for example, that budget again is cut. It means a notice has to be, to be, to be given to these people. It means they will still be paid and then they will be compensated. So we are still in a mess, ladies and gentlemen. The budget will not be, it's not going to be as easy as said. So personally, Gadon Omuchomba's points make a lot of sense. It is either the repeal bill or the supplementary budget. The supplementary budget might come without those clauses, you know, those clauses to be a reduced budget. But what if it doesn't come in time? Either way, the country will pay for these three offices. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to rest my case here, but just take one second, go below the comment section and tell us what do you think is going to happen. Perhaps if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, take one second and subscribe, like this video. Until you catch up again, stay safe and stay blessed.